stopping the violence. That was a theme of a youth summit in Steubenville held earlier today. Tonight, only on 9, the mother of a man gunned down on a Steubenville street speaks out at that summit. News 9's Donna Irvin has more on tonight's top story. I'm here because I'm on a mission. After this has happened to my son, I'm on a mission. And I will not stop being on a mission until they are caught. Whoever killed him are caught. Elizabeth Montgomery is the mother of Wise God Allah, gunned down about two weeks ago on the streets of downtown Steubenville. Now, following his death, several other shootings occurred, including a husband and wife shot in their own home. Now, a local minister says he came back to his hometown to help find an alternative route to violence. Things like that, talent shows, musical programs for our kids. Come, when we were young, we had it. How can it stop? Because we have gotten lazy, we got set in our ways that we don't care about nobody but ourselves. Once I started hearing about the recent crimes and recent problems that we've been having in the city, you know, it caught my attention because, you know, some of them were my friends, some of them I grew up with, and, you know, I hung around. And, uh, and it's a shame that uh, we have to come together and let them know that, hey, I'm still there for you. You know, I'm still your friend. If you need me, I'm here to talk to you, to help. Reverend Winston is urging more people to become positive role models. I'm Donna Irvin reporting for News 9 Tonight. The first over 50 state and local law enforcement officers execute search warrants and make drug arrests tonight. For the latest, we go live to downtown Steubenville and Kim Cabasco with more. Kim? Jim, we have just uh, an absolutely uh, massive outpouring of local and state law enforcement officials here tonight from uh, Steubenville, Jefferson County, and the Columbus area. I even see some uh, agents here from uh, Belmont County assisting in this raid. There is a helicopter in the sky monitoring the drug raid from above, and we even have some uh, canine units on hand here as well. They are targeting nine people indicted by the December term of the Jefferson County Grand Jury for uh, alleged aggravated drug trafficking. Let's take a look now at some of the videos that uh, we shot just a few moments ago. Police Chief Jerry McCartney uh, tells us he's had numerous complaints from neighbors in the area about uh, alleged and suspected drug activity here. And tonight's bust comes after a six-month undercover investigation by the Steubenville Police Department, uh, the Sheriff's Department, the Prosecutor's Office, also the Ohio Department of Public Safety. Now, aside from the arrest, uh, the, the uh, Jefferson County officials are making tonight a civil action uh, nuisance warrant, and that means essentially this establishment will be shut down legally, at least for the time being and right now they're not giving any names and it's not known if the nine people they were looking for were inside the bar when agents busted in but we will have uh, names for you tomorrow and also outline those charges for you but right now the safari lounge is shut down a huge drug bust here in downtown steubenville uh, looking for suspected and alleged drug traffickers we'll have the latest tomorrow on news nine for now kim cabasco live in downtown steubenville with instacam 2 back to studio nine all right kim thanks a lot for that report we'll have more on the drug bust tomorrow on news nine this weekend. Hosts, we begin our live team coverage with Donna Irvin in Wintersville, where many are getting ready for the white stuff. Donna. Well, do you know there's a lot of noise going on here at Snyder's Tires on Route 22 here in Wintersville. Just take a look at all the snow tires being mounted on cars and trucks. The employees here are working very quickly to get everyone in and out before the snow starts to fall. Now here at Snyder's Tires, they're well stocked with all kinds of winter treads. Customers started buying tires on Saturday, and today the manager says they're three to four times as busy. Hey, uh, it's a good deal, and that big snowstorm's coming, and I thought I'd get here early so we could take care of the situation. Well, we just came up with our mom over here and her grandma to come get some tires, and she's just needing some, and they're having a good, real, real good deal, and we're just along for the ride, huh? Did you hear about the big snowstorm? Is that why you're up? Yeah, yeah. So we're getting ready for it, huh? We have a need for snow tires. We've got a big storm coming, and we're pretty excited about the uh, ad we saw on the television. Uh, Snyder's here, so we're coming in to take a look, see what kind of a good deal we can get. We haven't had a significant snowfall for about two years. This, this evening, we're expecting several inches of snow to fall, and as Joe said, the, the texture of the snow is supposed to be very dry, and the wind is supposed to be fierce. So uh, if you're going to get snow tires, you better get them soon. I'm Donna Irvin, reporting live in Wintersville. Back to you, Dino, in Studio 9. All righty, that certainly is right. To find out more on what...
the Dayton County, number nine, Brian Seacourt, two minutes for charging. On October 29th, little Marlon Wise lost both his legs when he was trying to jump a train in Steubenville. Since that time, Marlon has been undergoing physical therapy, getting ready for his prosthesis. Marlon's teacher recently sent a miracle request in for him at WTOV9. Here's a look at his special day. Ten-year-old Marlon Wise loves the San Francisco 49ers. His mom says that's all he talks about. When the 49ers organization heard about Marlon's horrible accident from his fourth grade teacher, they wanted to give him some special gifts from the team that he loves. So to make this a memorable Christmas, Marlon was presented with several 49er gift items. A team picture, autographs, pennants, a pen, several jerseys, a jacket, and a 49er official autographed NFL football. This is wonderful. He, he loves the 49ers. He always talks about them. All the way. He's happy now. He got the football. See all his friends is 49 football. Marlon was pretty overwhelmed with all of his new gifts and the special attention he's been given over the past few weeks. As for his future, Marlon's mom says whatever he has to face, he'll make it with lots of help. One thing that gets us through mm -hmm. is God upstairs. That's the only one I pray to, to let me go on with this child. It's going to be hard, I already know, because, you know, the worst is over. It's a long road to go. And me and him, we can make it. Can't we handle? We'll make it. Our thanks go out to Mrs. Mitchell, Marlon's teacher, and the 49ers organization for their donation of all the items. Christmas. Well, as we told you earlier, the Pittsburgh Steelers were defeated by the Denver Broncos yesterday. The folks in the Ohio Valley maintained a great attitude. News 9's Donna Irvin has the story. Well, a lot of the sweatshirts are gone, and um, like I said, a lot of the terrible towels are gone. Um, just everything. People are just buying all of it up. We were now in the first quarter of the game, and Pittsburgh had just scored one more time. We're going to win. <laughs> uh, what kind of business? Um, Super Bowl shirts will be next. The Steelers were still winning when we got back to the Steubenville Kmart. Merchandise is selling really good. This area really backs the Steelers. And just before halftime, the dreams were still high as we crashed a big party in Raylan. Yeah! Woo! Yeah! 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 This was the Garner family Steeler home, decorated on the outside as well as the inside. They've been collecting paraphernalia since the steel curtain days. We have uh, we have stuff from the early 70s. Uh, this was the original Steeler fan, our mother, and uh, she's also on my hat here. My palms get sweaty when I think of the Steelers. They just they just they're just a good team. Yeah. Well, our last stop was Damon's Clubhouse. It was there where we got our sad farewells and hopes for next year. Yeah, I drove over a thousand miles just to come up here to watch this game, and it just devastated me to see this. I, I'm totally upset. Next year, they're going to do it. Next year, we'll be in the Super Bowl. Another hard year for the Steelers, but hey, no one thinks they're good, but they're a good team. A lot of good guys on a team. Maybe next year. Maybe. We still can't get over the guy who drove a thousand miles. I would have driven up to three rivers, the stadium. That's right. taking the extra 45 miles or so. Let's, uh, let's uh, head back to Joe. From the Ohio Valley's award-winning sports team, now News 9 Sports. We start with the East Coast Hockey League and the Wheeling Nailers going for a franchise best. Eighth straight win tonight at the Hammer Dome against the Peoria Rivermen. Nailers looking for that. Eighth straight win, the fans on hand, ready to go. And the Nailers playing good here, some good defense, setting up some dandy offense. They shoot and score, Danny Toblonik to Marquis Matthew. Nailers up 3-1. Physical game tonight, Jason Disher goes at it with Dennis Wright. Peoria would score three unanswered goals. They tie it here in the power play. David Paradise 
ties it at four. Under two minutes to go, Peoria, they think they've scored the go-ahead goal, but the goal is waved off. Peoria kicked the puck into the net. End of regulation, tied at four. Let's go to a shootout. Peoria, they're up four at first. They would score first. Butch Cable beating David Brumby. Naylor's answer, Dimitri Terebrin scores to tie it at one. Nothing more, though, would get by David Brumby. He gets a save, and Jeremy Brown shoots and scores. Great goal. Brown goes top shelf in the shootout. The Nailers a winner. 5-4 in the shootout. Pittsburgh Penguins in Buffalo. Take you. Good evening. Kelly has the night off. A woman is accused of stabbing her husband this morning in their Wheeling home. Sheriff's deputies tell News 9 the stabbing could be domestic violence related. News 9's Tracy Grazier learned today the couple does have a long history of domestic violence. She's standing by live in Wheeling with the details. Tracy? Jim and Kim, Sheriff's deputies are saying that Connie Tamborin stabbed her husband, Jerry Tamborin, this morning around 3.30 in their home. She has been arraigned in magistrate court here in Ohio County, but is out on bond tonight. In this instance, people are saying that Jerry Tamborin is the victim, but reports show that Connie has been victimized by her husband in the past. Now, you're going to be looking at the home here where the Tamborins live on Waddell's Run Road. I learned today that Connie has filed several protective orders against her husband here in Ohio County. And and the couple also has a history of domestic violence in the state of Ohio as well. At one point, the violence was so bad, Connie was referred by the sheriff's office to the Family Violence Prevention Program here in Wheeling at the YWCA. Angie Rosser is the program's legal advocate and follows up on all referrals. She advised Connie of the services available to her. Now, no one knows exactly what happened this morning, but sheriff's deputies do say the stabbing could be domestic violence related. Rosser says having a victim lash out against her abuser is rare. A woman who is a true victim of domestic violence knows how dangerous it could be to act out in that way or um, because she knows that she, you know, is going, it's going to come back to her tenfold often because um, she's, you know, the weaker or, or the smaller. Rosser does say when a victim lashes out, it usually is extreme and oftentimes ends in homicide. But she says there are options and ways to prevent it from going that far, though. One of them is to get help, and you can call the Family Violence Prevention Program. Here in Wheeling, their number is 232-2748. That is a 24-hour hotline. Or if you live somewhere else in West Virginia, you can call 1-800-698-1247. That is also a 24-hour number. The program will offer shelter and counseling to abused women. I've been wheeling. I'm Tracy Grazier. Jim and Kim, back to you in Studio 9. Thank you, Tracy. From our Thank you, Rick. So intense, she couldn't even open her front door. That's how one neighbor describes a fire last night in Bel Air. That neighbor also has some concerns about the fire, especially because it's been ruled an arson. News Night's Tracy Grazier talked with her today and has the details live. Tracy? Well, Sherry, fire broke out at an abandoned house at the corner of 45th and Franklin Streets last night in Bel Air about 1.30. Now, that fire has been ruled an arson, and the house is a total loss. And those two things really scare Geraldine Kimbrough. Yes, and it is. It's very, very scary. And from now on, it'll be hard sleeping at night, not knowing, you know, when something's going to happen to these other ones. Kimber lives right across the street from the house that caught on fire last night. She says it was so intense that she couldn't even open her front door. Her house is also surrounded by other abandoned homes. The house next door is empty, and the house directly behind hers is also abandoned. Since this fire was an arson, she's afraid one of the houses near hers could also be set on fire, and she could possibly lose her own home or her life to the flames. And I've lived here for 50 years and tried to keep our property up. 
but all the rest of it's just falling down around us and they won't do anything about it. Kimbrough says she and her entire family have contacted the mayor's office for years now to try and have something done about these fire hazards. Now, I talked with Bel Air Mayor Jerry Fisher today. He says he was not aware of the situation, but now that it's been brought to his attention, he will send the code inspector to the properties to see what can be done about them. He also says the city is in the process right now of trying to get some grant monies to tear down some of these dilapidated buildings. But he says so many sections of the city need cleaned up, it's going to be very difficult to get to all of them. Live, I'm Tracy Grazier. Sharing Jim, back to you in Studio 9. To a Pittsburgh hospital, his condition is not known. A woman trying to cross the street this afternoon in Wheeling ends up with several broken bones after she's hit by a car. The accident happened at the intersection of 14th and Chaplin Streets. Police say Elizabeth Lane was hit by a car that was turning the corner. The driver said she didn't see Lane. Lane suffered a broken ankle and arm. She was taken to Ohio Valley Medical Center. Police say it was an accident, but Sheets does face several citations. Covering the Valley New at 6 hour. Back to our top story. An Ohio Valley City is trying to tackle its problem with fire hydrants. Today, Belair replaced one hydrant and fixed another, but the water had to be shut off to do it. How often will this happen? News 9's Tracy Grazier is live with the answer on tonight's top story. Jim and Kim, we were the first ones to tell you about the problems with Bel Air's fire hydrant several months ago. Since then, we've been following this story. And today, we were there whenever Bel Air crews installed a new fire hydrant on 38th Street. The goal now is to put in one new fire hydrant each month. Now, the water had to be shut off for the entire city for several hours this morning. And this was the culprit. City workers rebuilt this hydrant on 38th Street, but it didn't have a shutoff valve. Workers had to turn off the water so the holding tanks didn't drain. Since Mayor Jerry Fisher has been in office, four or five hydrants have been replaced, and water has never been a problem before. He says shutting off the water is a rare occurrence, but it could happen again in the future. So a lot of times we can just close the shutoff valve and pull the hydrant out or fix it without having to go on to do what we did today. Hopefully we don't run into too many more like this. While the water was shut off, another new hydrant was also installed at the end of the block. Fisher says the city has five more new hydrants that can be put in before they have to start buying other ones. And he says they are trying to get more funding to buy those hydrants, but they haven't heard anything back from the state. Now, Fisher says in about a month, the city's entire hydrant system will be flushed out so they can tell which ones need replaced right now. He says the ones in the worst shape will be taken care of first. Live, I'm Tracy Grazier. Jim McKim, back to you in Studio 9. Thanks, Tracy. Tracy, thank you. Come. And in Marshall County tonight, the Old State Pen in Moundsville is set for a major nationwide training exercise. The second annual mock prison riot has been set for April. News 9's Tracy Grace is working this story live tonight. She has details on what could lead to more prison tourism. Tracy, what can you tell us? Well, Jim and Kim, tonight the Moundsville Economic Development Council called this mock prison riot the biggest thing to hit the city in years. Representatives from 28 states will be on hand for next month's training exercise. Now, you're going to be looking at some video here of last month's prison riots. Only West Virginia